So in Rust ownership, there's only ever the simple case that there is one owner to a particular variable. However, there could be times where you need multiple owners for that one particular variable. We're gonna talk about reference counted smart pointers in Rust. My name is Ricky and welcome to the Dev Method. So if you guys like what you're seeing, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more things like this, just hit the subscribe button below. In Rust, you can enable multiple owners of a particular variable with something called the RC. The RC stands for reference counting. RC keeps track of multiple references to a single value. RC can determine whether the variable is in use or not anymore. We use this in Rust when we cannot determine who used the value last at compile time. An RC is used for single-threaded usages scenarios only. Concurrency is actually discussed in chapter 16 of the Rust programming book, and that's where they'll cover more of a reference counting with multi-threaded programs. So we're gonna take a look back at the cons list that we started in a video or so ago. So here's our example. Uh, we have our list, which is an enum. It has two different variants. We have cons and then we have nil. And that would signify like the end of the list. So cons then holds an I32, and then we have a box of that list. And so if you can't remember from before, uh, boxes are a pointer to something that lives in the heap. So that is what our RC could do as well. So here's our example. Now let's run this with just the box and let's see the issues we run into. So cargo run, and we get some issues. So here it's telling us uh, A is of type list, which does not implement the copy trait. And that's fine. So far, so good. And now we move the value into this new box. But then we try and move the value again. We can't do that with borrowing rules, just the one owner of the value. So now we introduce RC everywhere where there was box. So we have RC here. And so that is gonna store the value on the heap. Here we are RC again. So we're making an RC cons here on A. And uh, it's gonna store five with another RC of cons for the value 10. And then we have the end of the list there. So now when we have A and we want to reference count it because there's going to be multiple owners, what we use is actually RC colon colon clone. And then we pass a reference to A. And it basically is like returning A back again uh, and then just incrementing the count by one. So this is where it's keeping track. And then we do the same thing, uh, incrementing the count by one when we do the same clone call here on line 20. So let's run this example and see what happens. All right, so cargo run, and everything checks out. So that's all good. So let's look at the next example and see how the counts can change over time. We're gonna have a really small example here, but this is exactly what the book has in the Rust programming book online. All right, so here we have the list again, just like before. It's got the RC there. Now uh, we bring RC into scope with the use statement, and that's this uh, STD, so the standard library, and it's under the module RC, and then we bring in RC here. So now when we're using it in our project, um, we're gonna do a print line for every time that the reference count uh, is changing. So here we have A that's being created, just like before, and then we use this RC colon colon strong count, and we can just see like what is the count at this point. So now when we do B, this should increment it by one. So we should go from a count of one on line 17 to a count of two on line 19 when we print that out. Then we introduce C, right? And then we print, what is that? So that should be three on line 22. And then after that, C actually gets dropped. So that reference count does go down. And then we should see another two here on line 24. If I've done my math correctly, we're gonna see that output. Let's try it. All right, so cargo run, nice. So here it is, that first uh, count on line 17, aligning with this here, so count is one. So it just created the one RC, that's it. And then we increment it by two, or I'm sorry, we increment by one to get two, and that's on line 18, that's where the increment happened, and then this is where we print it out on line 19. We get that new scope, because we're forcing this uh, underscore C variable to drop 
in between lines 22 and 23, Rust is dropping that variable. If you guys want to see more about drop, there's actually another video I have previously if you want to take a look. But there it is. And uh, yeah, and then it comes out of scope. Now we are dra dropping back down from three to two. And that's what this last print statement shows us as well. So now there is a weak underscore count that you could use uh, from RC, but that's not something that we're going to cover here in this video. You can read more about the weak counts in chapter 15, section six. That's where you can take something like all these strong counts and look at the weak counts. But then you want to eliminate these like strong reference cycles, because what if like A pointed to B, which pointed to C, which pointed back to A. So if you want to eliminate those kind of things, you're going to want to learn about something like weak. If you want to see a video like that, just leave it in the comments below. So I know this was a short one, but if you guys uh, need to watch this again, please do so because it's not that straightforward, especially if you've never really talked about reference counting before from other languages. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, if you like what you saw, just again, thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Until next time, see ya.